All right, so here we go with Candace Owens. And Dr. Umar is gonna give his perspective as well after the video. It's kind of like they, they combine the video, so we'll react to what she said and then kind of react to what he says. They combine the video where he talked about Okay, on the Breakfast Club. Gotcha. Yep. I thought he had replied to her earlier because I know a lot of people will hear you say, Well, Candace, you're speaking a lot about, you know, the black family, but then you married a white man. Yeah, I don't Dr. Umar would have a huge problem with that. Yeah. Are you familiar with Dr. Umar? I have heard of him. I have not listened to him, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. What is his argument, actually? If you could just repurpose his argument, uh, he feels that, everything you know, black. No, <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. is everything. No, he, feel, he feels black men should be with black women <laughs> because when you're talking about it from the economic standpoint, you want to grow the wealth as a black family. But that and, doesn't... and if you marry somebody from another race, then you know your wealth will be with that person, and he doesn't like that. I believe Candace Owens is a paid Negro pen. <laughs> oh, hey. he replied. Did he reply? Or so I don't know if this is he did reply like the text in that video was him. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if he's replied to that. I know he's spoken on her in the past, and I don't know if that was something that they looped in from mm -hmm. the past, but he has spoken on her in the past. And you know, he be he believes that she she just parrots the mainstream conservative ideas and that she's not really for black people. That's what he believes, based on what mm -hmm. I what I've ascertained. C. Dot Hustle says he's here to challenge conservatives. All right. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully we give you something to challenge. But I don't know that too many people are going to dislike. I know my perspective on this. I think I have a little bit of knowledge on yours. But do you believe that black men should be with black women? And if not, are that like? Do you believe that a black that that if you're not, if you're black and you marry somebody outside the black co uh, community, that you're a sellout. We'll start with that. Ooh, that's a sellout. Ooh, you hit me hard today, brother. Relax, relax. Sellout. Um, I think it's contradicting at times because if you if if you're pro like this, pro like that, pan African, you know, whatever title you want to put on it, I think it comes with some uneven territory that you have to navigate because you're fighting for black people, fight for the black family, fight for the black community, but then you got a white wife at home. So do you think you're a sellout? If you're, if you're a black man married to a white woman or an Asian woman or any woman that's not a black woman, are you a sellout who's not for your community? Nah, I'm going to say no. Why? Why do say you? No. I disagree. I disagree. I think you are. Because I think it discredit I think it discredits because even though your your family is a reflection of you, right? I think most people say that. I can't discredit the work that people have done for the black community. Like Nick Cannon, for example. Nick Cannon has however many baby mamas, but he does contribute to a lot of uh black success. He gives black people opportunities. I mean, look at all the people he's brought on his show that he's helped get music deals you know he's he's really giving back to the community in a positive way so to discredit him and say he's a sellout i mean he's doing it he's doing well, more me, than most people let me why let me tell you why i think that on a certain level you're a sellout if you're not with a black woman because i think that you know if you're trying to strengthen the black community you have to build the black family and I don't think that there's any better way to build the black family than for black men to be with black women. Um, and when I think of a sellout, let's let's use definitions here. When I think of a sellout, I think of somebody that they put their personal uh, desires and agendas above the black community in a way that's detrimental to the black community. Mm -hmm. um, I that's what I believe. I think that your your and it's not like a small thing. I think who you marry is a larger thing and it's a symbol of your values and what you respect. So I think a lot of people look at love like, oh, well, I'm going to go marry who I love and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, it's like, to me, that's not putting the community first. That's, that's, not, that's not putting the community first. And so like, you know, it'd be like if I had this, 
this disease where if I go around people, you know, I can get them really sick and they could die. And then I choose to still go around them. I'm not putting the community first. I'm putting me first because I wanted to go to Dave and Buster's. So like, <laughs> what what are your thoughts? Like, I guess, is there, is there anything that, that a black person can do in your eyes that would make them a sellout? Mm. It's, it's kind of hard, bro, because now nowadays trying to catch the attention of the black community is very hard. If you aren't the typical Negro that that they uh, idolize, right? <clears throat> I think you're a seller if you don't get back to your community. If you get into a position of maybe financial strength or you know economic status, whatever the case may be. And you're not giving back or giving game back to the community. I think you're a sellout, and I think that's where it stems from. Oh, you change. You know, you went to Howard or Harvard or whatever, and now you're this big guy, but you haven't done shit for the community. It doesn't. For me, that's that's a sellout. I don't know if I would really say who you date or who you marry is being a sellout because you could be with a black woman and still treat her like shit. So, what kind of example are you setting then? Because even when black women and black men get together, this isn't for everybody. Let me say that. Not for everybody. Eight times out of 10, what do we see black women and black men doing? Breaking up, beating on each other, single moms, single dads. So should somebody really miss out on having their idea of love to be with a black woman? I, I think that those are two separate things. One we're what, talking what, about. Religion. What would you say a sellout is then? What would you? What well, would I you think say? a sellout is somebody that does something in their own best interest at the detriment of the black community. Um, and I think, and I'm not talking about, oh, you accepted this job or something. I, I'm talking about, you know, like the black family is an institution. And when you're doing stuff to take away from that institution and damage it, then I think that on a certain level, you're a sellout. And I think you know, you can be a sellout in that area. Like I think sellout is on a spectrum. Okay. I don't think it's, maybe that's the, 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 the way that I'm saying it is, I don't think it's either you're a sellout or you're not with most things. I think like in this area, are you selling out? And I think when, I think marriage and family is a huge area and a huge economic opportunity and the foundation of the black community so that's why i'm so hard on it where i i do believe that there's no better union than a black man and a black woman when it comes to building the black community and so it's like if you were trying to go build a house and they they built it with like they built the foundation with a very weak material and then just piled a bunch of other stuff on top of it just to make it look good it's like the foundation is still rotten and a lot of our issues, I think, stem from the fact that we don't have strong black families, not just a family, but strong black families, people that are going to, like you said, give back to their community. I don't think you get that as much when you're not raised in black families. I don't think that you get the, the whole, um, well, uh, I'm going to try to do stuff for other black people when you're raised in different types of families. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, that th that's kind of how I would look at a sellout. Right. Mm -hmm. Said about Nick Cannon. Mm. Them the only them the only yep. black relationships you see. So so growing up, and I think this this is C dot from last time. Growing up, most of my family, my dad's side, uh, because I mixed with a lot of things, but they, a lot of them were in domestic violence relationships. They weren't the best example for what a black family should look like. Um, they exhibited a lot of behaviors that just weren't really appropriate at the age I was at. So seeing them and then seeing everything outside of that, growing up as an athlete as well, seeing the Ray Lewis's of the world, Ray Rice, you see them beat on their women and, you know, just be nasty to them. It didn't really set a good example for the black family concept, right? And then celebrities and, and all those people played a big role in the area that I grew up in. 
So you had girls probably middle school age, I would say, acting like Trina. They want to be like Trina from Miami. They want to, you know, before the city girls was the city girls. They they wanted to be like that. So that stigma and those stereotypes, they, they came with it. And so it was always, not, not to say it was always looked down upon to be with a black woman, but it definitely was not as popular as it is now. Mm-hmm. But I lived in Florida, so Florida Florida is a little bit different. It depends. I think it depends on the area that you grow up into. Right. And then and this is why I'm careful with this conversation, because I understand that many of us are not raised to respect black love. Many of us are not raised to have the expectation that if you're a black man, you're going to be with a black woman. If you're a black woman, you're going to be with a black man. Although we tend to marry who we look like and things like that, I don't believe that there's that racial pride that is necessary in order to properly organize. Like we're missing part of it. So I don't fault anyone, but I I I'm I I think from a logical perspective and from just a community building perspective, it's going to be very difficult to build the black community without strong black families. Not just black kids with a family, but a black family because right. there is a difference. Right. All right, I'm going to play a little more of this. Yeah. Good good uh good comments from C dot and Sean. One thing you have to understand about the white power structure when you're talking about Candace Owens and Jesse Lee Peterson's. Okay. One thing you have to understand the white power structure through the government or through the corporate structure, they find influential Negroes and they buy them out in order to change the level of consciousness in black America. Candace Owens was sponsored by the white power structure so she could begin to dilute the black. You must try Miro. Before Whoa. Miro, we got lost across different <laughs> tools. Monday, hey. Tuesday, Slack, Trump. First narrative. Get that Candace white woman Owens off my screen. Jesse Lee Peterson, these kind of Negroes, these types of Negroes are found and funded. They are found and funded in order to distract from the narrative okay so so right there and c dot says uh that's why pan-africanism is a necessity i agree out of all of the like ideologies and philosophies and things like that i think pan-africanism is the most potent when it comes to the black community but what he's talking about right there where you know certain black voices are found in order to dilute the broader message of, you know, black pride, building the black community. Do you think that that's something that happens? Do you think that there's some, uh, some validity to what he's saying there? Mm. Or is he just being emotional? <laughs> well, Umar, that's what a lot of people were saying when I was like, I want to see a Candace Owens, Dr. Umar debate. They said Candace Owens would beat Dr. Umar because Dr. Umar is too emotional. Mm. I mean, I think I think he has some points. I, I always wonder if, like, if she was on the other side, how would he feel about her? If she was on the on the other side, and not the side she's on right now, would he still feel the same way? I think he would feel differently, but not in the way that maybe you're thinking. I think she would probably be parroting a, a feminist agenda because the thing about it is, is I think they agree on a lot more than they disagree on as mm-hmm. far as like feminism, the trans stuff, um, all of that stuff. I think that when it just comes to the black identity, like I've always said this about Candace Owens, I think Candace Owens is a conservative first and a black person second. And what I what I mean by that is, I think that she puts the conservative agenda, like the political stuff, above the black community. Um, And I think Dr. Umar puts the black community first. And I don't think Candace Owens does that. She tries to appeal to the black community on one side. And she also tries to appeal to, I think, white conservatives that that want to say what she's saying, but will get in trouble if you will. So I think that 
white conservatives lived through Candace Owens vicariously and black people are attracted to her because she says things that they find controversial and they want to sit there and scapegoat her or make it seem like people like her are the problem. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that they agree on a lot. I think that it's just Candace Owens doesn't, I guess, uh, lean into the whole black identity thing and the black community first type of ideology. I mean, what what are your thoughts? I know you think that Candace Owens would beat Dr. Umar in a in a debate. Why do you think that? I think purely if we're talking purely based off of fact, like factual data statements, those type of things, I think she would she would eat them up just because Umar is more like you said emotional based and some of his stuff is like sound bites. You know, when that's you not what I think. That was just no, no, not you. No, no, not that's you. What they think. no I'm t I'm talking about we and we had conversations about him being emotional. We we know that's a fact. That's that's the truth. Not not overly emotional to a point where it's like his the bias Feminine. comes out. He says he stands strong in what he believes. I think some of the things he says for sound, but I don't I don't think there's any some of the things I don't think there's any substance behind it. And I think getting up against somebody like Candace Owens. You know, I don't, I don't think he – I think he'll bring up some good stuff, but I don't think he'll overall, like, be a, the winner. I think that he will wash the floor at Candace Owens. I think Dr. Umar will wash the floor at Candace Owens because Candace Owens is used to a certain line of questioning, and I don't think that she's thinking critically about these things. Like, I know a lot of people say that she thinks critically about these things, but to me it's like a lot of her things, like, she doesn't say anything profound to where I'm like, she read something and then she critically thought about that and then came away with this. I think that with Dr. Umar, he's he doesn't parrot a left-leaning agenda. He doesn't parrot a right-leaning uh, agenda. He's for Black people, and that's where I think that I can respect it. Whereas Candace Owens, I do like a lot of the things that she says, but I don't think that she's doing it for the Black community in the same way that Dr. Umar is. And so I don't think that she's used to somebody asking certain questions. So I think that's where she would get tripped up at is he's not going to ask her the surface level questions. He's going to be like, OK, so Candace Owens, you're for the black community. She's going to be like, I'm for all communities. And then he's going to get her. You're for the black community. You're, you're for all communities. But you're a black woman married to a white man. And you're constantly talking about the black community. Why do you do that? Like he's gonna ask her those type of questions that I don't think she's really been challenged on in the same way, uh, like like that from somebody like a Dr. Umar, who he's very knowledgeable. He can give you dates. He can give you facts. He can give you uh, mm -hmm. things that the mainstream media isn't gonna talk about or or ask in a certain way. So I I think that he's used to debating people like Candace Owens. I don't think Candace Owens is used to debating people like him. Maybe. I think both of them will have their weak weak spots because he's not in her world and she's not in his world, right? Umar is strictly dedicated to black topics, black, you know, black everything, which understandable he'll have the upper hand in that. When it comes down to the logistics and operational stuff of how the black community can improve, I think Candace might have more of an idea of what that would what? Look like. what that would you, look like. She she does not offer solutions. Neither, but neither does Umar. And I told you that a long time ago when he was I think always he offers solutions. I don't think he takes action on them. I don't think he. I don't think he emphasizes enough on the solutions. For a while, it was white people, white people, white people. It was never like okay, we know white people have been colonizers and all those things with history. But how do I get out of the situation that I'm in? There was never key points for how to get out of it. It was more of white this, white that, white that, and that's why I got tired of hearing them. Because, dude, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna talk about it, all right, we can acknowledge that colonization happened. We we feel the effects now. How do I do better? Now he's getting better at giving out some of that. Uh, 
guidance on on how to get to certain levels. He is now, but before it was just strictly about white people. So I think, and I can see where you're coming from, from a certain perspective, but you also have to understand that he's probably made thousands of videos and like, sometimes you're going to hear content where it's just about white people. Sometimes you're going to hear content where it's, he's giving lectures and breaking down what a specific community needs to do. I think a lot of it is playing the social media game where, you know, he just goes live and talks about certain things, but Here's the solutions that I've heard from him is black men need to be with black women so that they can create a strong black family. And those black kids have a good uh, a good foundation and a good uh, system and role model to, to, to look after. He believes that uh, black parents should be focusing more on reading and, and, and spending more time with their children and educating them. Also uh, the, the, school to prison pipeline, ADHD. He's done a lot of research and released books on that and does consultations with families and is kind of giving people the blueprint on how to get your child out of that system. But also just, I think, making the Pan-Africanism ideology more mainstream or more put, pushing it more so that we have a framework to look at these situations from. But I, I can see why somebody would be like, oh, he talks about white people. He did an interview recently where I think somebody had brought this up where they were like, you know, um, you talk about the black struggle so much that makes it seem like you're operating from a victim mindset. And he, sta he stated clearly, he's like, although I articulate the problems that white people have caused, every solution that I name is black people at the center of those solutions. Black people have to fix their own problems. So yeah, he talks a lot about white people causing the problem, but he talks about black people fixing the problems. Whereas Candace Owens, I think, parrots the narrative of kumbaya, you know, let's not look at race. I think she said in that interview that she's ne she never looked at the race of her husband and thought about that before marrying him. That's BS. To, that, to me, that's just BS. Like, if she grew up in a black family, which she says she did, I doubt that it never crossed her mind like, oh, I wonder what my family's going to say when I bring a white man home. And you can't make me believe that, especially with her being in politics and, and things like that and the things she's heard. I don't believe for a second that she never thought about the race of her husband or that she didn't notice he was a white guy and she's black and things like that. You, I just don't believe that that's the case. I mean, she might not put an emphasis on it. I mean, obviously, you could see what he looks like. Like, we all know that. But she, it may not have been an emphasis. And I think that's what she, she, what she was trying to get at was she didn't put an emphasis on his race. And I think that's a – I think that – coming from that perspective. Because in some households, that's like – if you grew up without knowing that, then going forward in your adult life, that's not going to be a thing. Like, race wasn't – Race wasn't told to me until I got into probably like more like high school level. Like we were kids. We grew up as kids. They let us grow up, be kids. We didn't care if you were black, white, yellow, blue, what race, whatever. It didn't matter. And we grew up all together, almost like a coalition type of thing. Right. So it wasn't until I got to high school that that really started to show and then getting to college and, and so forth and so on. So if you didn't grow up that way, then when you go look for a partner, that's going to be your mentality. I don't really right. care about the race, but. If that happened in her 20s, I could see. Like her early 20s, teenage years. But she's 30. She, I think she got married in her 30s. Right. Like 29, 30. She had already been in politics. She, she talks about Black people all the time on her, her YouTube channel and social media and stuff. So I do believe that she's looked at interracial dating and things like that. It's probably come up. And she even said like, a lot of people will say that I only dated white guys and things like that. I'm just saying, I don't think that it's as, it's like she didn't know about interracial dating and how that's kind of looked at and things like that. She said mm -hmm. that she was more liberal before. So right. it's like, I, I don't think that she's as innocent when it comes to race and racism and not knowing about it. But here's an interesting thing. 
Candace Owens is a conservative, right? Do you think that Candace Owens would date like a left, a lefty, a Democrat, somebody that believes in abortion, that believes abortion's okay, that believes in the woke movement and feminism, which she says that she hates? Do you believe that she would date somebody or marry somebody that held those beliefs? Mm, probably not. She's she's way too strong in who she is and what she believes. Uh, right. So, and, and that goes back to my point is like, yeah. it's not just about love because you, I'm sure she could love somebody that held those beliefs. Right. Like she, she could love a Democrat, but she's not going to date them and marry them because of her value. She's thinking about, well, what if I have kids with this person? What are they going to be teaching my kids? And right. What if, you know, like, and, and to me, that goes back to the racial pride thing and building the black community. If you value the black community, I think that you weigh the race of your your partner in that factor because you value the black family and the black community. Even though you may love somebody from a different community, that's going to be something that you you mull over before you do it. Just like I think, you know, people who are religious, they want to typically marry somebody who practices the same religion. Yeah, they could fall in love with somebody else. But their values and principles state, I need to marry somebody that believes in this religion, just like I do, for the church or to promote this and the values and things like that. I see it no differently when it comes to black men marrying black women and concentrating our energy on building the black community. Yeah.